Today's video will be all about the warp speed bubble that NASA scientists may have discovered. In a world of science where professionals have constantly been trying to achieve the speed of light, can this experiment be the output they've wanted? How can this warp bubble be created? Who was behind the discovery? And can warp speed actually be attained? Stick around to the end to find out all about it. Throughout the years, multiple space agencies and scientists have collaborated to develop fast and efficient travel outside of Earth. Multiple spacecrafts have been created that can achieve speeds of up to 200,000 miles per hour, but that is still 0.05% of the speed of light. While many have dreams of creating crafts that can potentially beat the speed of light, no one has been successful in doing so. However, as shocking as it may sound, a scientist from NASA may have actually been successful in doing so. During his PhD study in 1994, physicist Miguel Alcubierre coined the term warp bubble. To be honest, the explanation of this term is very complex and is best suited for those who are professionals in the field. So let us make the definition simple. A warp bubble is a bubble through which a spacecraft could achieve apparent faster than light travel. But instead of achieving a speed faster than that of light, the warp bubble would travel distances by contracting space in front of it and expanding the space behind it. Didn't quite get it? Let us make it simpler. Within the normal laws of space and time, objects cannot accelerate to the speed of light. Hence, you need to bend the laws a bit. So in the warp bubble, space around the object would be shifted so that the object can reach its final destination faster than light. To give you an example, imagine two aircrafts, A and B. Both aircrafts are of the same model, so it's fair to assume that they both have the same top speeds. Now, suppose we place a thunderstorm in front of both of these aircrafts and have plane A pass through the thunderstorm and give B the ability to shift the thunderstorm from its pathway. In that case, even though both can travel equally fast, B will reach its destination faster because it possesses the ability to shift the space in front of it and create space behind it. The same goes for the warp bubble. It just shifts space in front of it and covers up by creating space behind it. All this can be done in a warp bubble, and no laws of physics will be violated. The major problem that a warp bubble solves is time dilation, which occurs when traveling at light speed. Those who don't know what time dilation is, it is the phenomenon of an object traveling at light speed and having its environment change. If you were to say, travel in a train that possessed the ability to travel at the speed of light, it may take you an hour to reach from one point to another, but once you step out of the train, everything will have aged by over 100 years, presumably. Warp bubbles eliminate this problem, as space inside remains unaffected in these bubbles. This means that if you're traveling to a planet at warp speed, not only will the expected time of your journey reduce significantly, but also mean that upon return, the amount of time that you spent in the bubble would be equal to the time that you would have actually spent on Earth. Let's take a step back to understand what the warp drive is before we get any further into what this warp bubble could represent for space travel. The secret resides in two of Einstein's major publications on special and general relativity, published in 1905 and 1915 respectively. These publications establish three fundamental physics theories, among other things. Number one, the universe's speed limit is the speed at which light travels. 299,792,458 meters per second Hence, we repeat that a warp bubble is not actually faster than the speed of light. It is faster in apparent motion. Number two, the flow of time will shift relative to an observer at speeds nearing the speed of light. In other words, space travelers who travel quicker age slower than their slower counterparts, as seen in Interstellar when they visit the water planet or our train example given before. Number three, Space and time are linked together in a fabric that ebbs, flows, and bends around mass, dubbed space-time. Gravity is the cause of this curvature. Dr. Harold G. White says that space warp enables one to travel arbitrarily great distances in dynamically short times without ever breaking the speed of light locally. For example, getting to Proxima Centauri, the closest star to Earth in a month as measured by spacecraft and mission control clocks. 
Warping space-time would resemble the fabric bunching up in front of the bubble and then stretching out behind it in a train, similar to a wormhole, which potentially allows you to skip across space-time by walking through a region. This phenomenon is like an escalator at an airport mall. It's like if ground behind us is appearing from nowhere and is getting destroyed or disappearing in front of us. A warp bubble might move down this corridor and ride the clumping space-time fabric in a way that its relative time stayed slow, which means that in Star Trek, Kirk wouldn't be an old man when he arrived, despite moving huge distances faster than light speed, according to theory and science fiction. However, there is a catch. The bubble must be wrapped in negative energy, such as that produced by anti-gravity. Unfortunately, that isn't something that can easily be replicated in a laboratory. How can we discover a warp bubble? Before we answer that question, we would like to thank you for successfully making it till here. You can extend your support by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Now, let's continue. The negative energy limitation may appear to be a death knell for warp drive, yet there are still some rays of hope. For one thing, according to 2021 research by physicist Eric Lentz, who studied the problem during the lockdown, we may be able to do away with it entirely by using the Casimir effect. The Casimir effect, which causes magnetic fields to fluctuate, could be the source of the solution for White and colleagues. In a nutshell, the Casimir effect is the attractive force of changing magnetic fields that pulls two objects together in a vacuum, such as plates or mirrors. According to the theory, electromagnetic waves constantly flow even in a vacuum, but only a few small waves can fit between the two objects, because of which the total vacuum energy between the items becomes less than the outside energy, attracting them together. Negative energy can be formed on very small scales during such interactions. White and colleagues were looking at something called Casimir cavities for DARPA when they found something that looked suspiciously like a warp bubble in their calculations. White said, The detailed numerical analysis of our custom Casimir cavities helped us identify a real and manufacturable nano or microstructure that is predicted to generate a negative vacuum energy density such as it would manifest a real nanoscale warp bubble, however humble it may be. White and his colleagues wrote that a toy model consisting of a 1 micron diameter sphere centrally located in a 4 micron diameter cylinder could be used to explore the Casimir effect energy density experimentally. So DARPA and NASA discovered a real warp bubble? This is the question that all of you must be wondering. It appears to have the potential to be if it can be experimentally validated. Not all scientists, though, are convinced. Regardless of how this recent discovery turns out, White believes that scientists and aerospace engineers are still a long way from constructing true warp drive. And that's not a problem he's aiming to address right now. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.